Hey guys, in this uh, video we're going to have a brief discussion on the free body diagram. Um, the free body diagram is potentially the most important thing that you need to master uh, when it comes to mechanics. Okay, the free body diagram. I'm not sure if you were introduced to it in high school, but if you get the free body diagram wrong, then all your, uh, your, your calculations after that will be wrong and your answer will be wrong, okay? And you will calculate incorrect forces and it'll just be a huge mess up, okay? So you need to pay a lot of attention to the free body diagram, what it is, how to work with it. Okay, so what is, the free what is a free body diagram? Okay, well, um, we start off by the previous video, we discussed the equation of equilibrium, which just simply says that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Now remember, this is a vector, so if we're in a two-dimensional um, space, then this would become sum of the forces in the x is zero, and sum of the forces in the y is zero, right? Okay. Remember from chapter 2 we would have this equation that said the resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. Okay, so it's really, in chapter 2, all we were doing was we're calculating a resultant force. We, we, it, it wasn't necessary that it had to be zero. All we were doing in chapter 2 essentially, we, we, we were practicing to calculate a resultant force from a number of forces. But now in chapter 3, we are f zooming in and focusing on in on equilibrium which means that all the forces have to be zero if an object is in equilibrium okay if this pen this pen now that you see there is lying it's in equilibrium right that means by definition that all the forces acting on it are equal to zero okay so so what's the next step now if we are if we are to begin to calculate forces, try to determine forces, and work with this equation, this is the point. If we are trying to work with this equation, which allows us to find unknown forces, then what we need is a free body diagram. Body diagram. Okay? Now, what is a, a free body diagram? Essentially, it is, it is simply a, a body or a particle that has been isolated, okay? So it's a particle that has been isolated from its, from its environment, from its surroundings, okay? So again, if you take a look at this pen, we know that this pen is now in equilibrium, and... Um, but what, what's, what's its surroundings? Can you see the book is pressing up against it? Gravity is pulling it down. So right now this pen is not isolated from its surroundings. But if I am just to... So, so if I say here's the table and here's the pen. Okay. There's my pen. There's the table. At this point, this body is not isolated from its surroundings because it's, it's still got the effect of the, um, it's the, the, the table, right? But if I am to draw a free body diagram of this pen, I isolate it from its surroundings. That means I don't, I don't include anything that's, any of its surroundings. But after I isolate it, I have to then include the forces acting on that body that were due to the surroundings. Does that make sense? So even here, what's, what's actually happening to the pen? Why is it in equilibrium? Why is it not moving up or down, left or right or whatever? Why? Because all the forces acting on this pen are in equilibrium. They are cancelling each other out. So say now there were some forces that I didn't know acting on the pen, then what would I do? I would draw a free body diagram which means that I would isolate this pen from its surroundings, but then I would need to include the forces. So what are the forces acting on it? Say weight down, and you've got this normal force. Due to, okay, that, those should be aligned, okay? 
So that's the basic idea, guys, is we are taking an object that's, that's, uh, you know, that's touching things, that's resting on, on, on other things, that's resting on surroundings. We isolate the particle. We isolate it. And then, once we've isolated it, we include every single force acting on it that was due to the original surroundings. So this table, this the table was applying a normal force, okay? And gravity was applying a weight. So when I isolate it, I have to apply the normal force and the weight. And then, once I'm in this position, then I'm able to move on to my... Uh, equation of equilibrium and begin to solve for any unknown forces. Okay? I'll carry on with 3.2 in the next video.